Hey Legionnaires and welcome back, we're here with Napoleon Toads War 3, as already like some combat un gets underway, so we have uh, some like Lutzal Jaegers here that just routed some uh, chasseurs of uh, Spain. But yeah, we're doing Napoleon Toads War 3, so something a bit different today, um, I finally got myself on my hands on a replay, uh, thankfully sent to me by uh, Scouts of Entertainment, and uh, yeah, we're going to try and, uh, well... Commentate this is going to be very different to what you've usually seen. No, like, Romans or, like, Vikings or whatever else. We've now got line infantry and light infantry of various nations of Europe. And here we go. We've got... Uh, we're going to get rid... Of, I think we'll just get rid of the uh, map for a little bit. We don't need it just yet. But, I mean, we've got a uh, Wurdenburg here. One of the G uh, German states that was, like, loyal to, well, Napoleon at points. And then changed to, like, the Allies and all sorts. But they look awesome. These line infantry here. Got, like... I don't know what these helmet style is, but I mean, it's a really, really cool helmet. Don't know how much it protects you, but... Uh, well, I would say it's a helmet. It's probably more of a hat. I don't think it's like a World War One or two helmet. Um, but yeah, so it means it looks like uh, Lutzal. We've got t uh, two armies, obviously. Two f uh, 4v4, 4v4s. It looks like we have Lutzal over here for I-Corps, uh, which is another German state. We have Prussia, the main German state we have. Uh, Russia, 1799 back there, so you have like various different dates of uh, like nations. Um, I think the Prussians are 1813 to 1815. So obviously, if you've not never played Napoleon Total War 3, it is a mod for Napoleon Total War. Uh, definitely worth checking out. And then the final, uh, like I say, Allied army because I guess they are all Allied forces, is a uh, Austria, and it is 1809 is the uh, year that they're playing in. So yeah, we have uh, Vedenberg here. We also have the Spanish, because we saw them just get routed earlier. I think that's in there. Yeah, it's the Spanish. I want to say it's like the actual Spanish army under like Joseph Bonaparte. And it's 18 or 10. I don't think it's like the Spanish, because it's like a French... Well, you can see that I think there's then two French armies. We have the Guard Imperial, and we have, yeah... There you go, that's the other one. The Spanish army here, which is 1807 to 1814. That's the other like Spanish sort of style faction that there is. But yeah, I mean, these units look amazing. And just we'll see, like, some uh, uh, chasseurs and uh, chevalegas go by here. Look awesome. They look awesome. And uh, since I did, like, my degree, or, like, my dissertation for my degree was in Napoleonics, it's really good to eventually go and do some Napoleonics on the channel. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we can get a good view of all of the uh, action that takes part. I mean, this is a fairly long replay. <laughs> It's a really long le replay, so I definitely recommend you go and get some snacks and drinks and uh, prepare yourself for the bloodbath that is to begin. I think I'm going to fast forward ever so slightly because, uh, well, I think they're just getting into position. That little bit of action early on I thought was going to be the catalyst for a lot more, but it would seem not. But definitely, if you would like to see more T Napoleon Total War 3 on the channel, I would uh, fully recommend you leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and... Uh, well, yeah, just leave a comment to show your support. And it looks like the French are getting a little bit cl too close to, uh, for comfort here. We've got some Dragoons of, uh, well, some Imperial Dragoons. Guard, guard Dragoons, I should say, not Imperial Dragoons. They're all Imperial Dragoons, technically. But yeah, I mean, I mean, these guys look awesome. Their models look amazing. As they just go by with their leopard skin on, like, their helmets. I imagine how many leopards got killed for that. Poor cats. But I mean, also, like, the flags on this is just so small, so I don't even really need to hide them. Because they're hardly in the way. And the morale on this is, like, awful. Well, not awful, but it's really low. It's like a couple of volleys from stuff, and they, they go. We'll just get rid of that building capture. That's annoying me, being there. But it looks like the French are going to take this hill. They're going to get the high ground on the Austrians here. Which is really good. Kind of reminded me of Auslitz a bit. With the Prats and Heights here. It's not. We're in America. I think this is an American map, so it's a very bizarre thing. But yeah, this is the uh, French-Spanish uh, army sort of thing. So I mean, we'll have a look and see how different they are. But I don't think they're going to be massively different. These are uh, Bourbon Dragoons. Bourbon Dragoons here. And it looks like a building has been taken. Yeah, they look pretty cool. Obviously, the Spanish being held by the Bourbons at points. So I guess that's kind of the idea. They've got, got a lot of cavalry here. And this is again the Spanish, uh, French, like mix. Got some more dragoons over here. Lots and lots of dragoons, it would seem. Like different variants of the same, of like dragoons, basically. And we've got, uh, this is the guard army here. So, I mean, this is going to be a very elite army, obviously, when it 
when it eventually shows itself. But yeah, this is. Oh yeah, these are like the uh, almost like old guard just mounted. They look awesome. Basically, what they are, they're grenadiers, they're chevals, so they're just they're just old guard mounted on horses. So they're very very strong. So yeah, we're just gonna have a look at some of these units while uh, they appear. So if you you can always fast forward. I'll probably have left a time, or might hopefully post credit. Pope has left a time for uh, well when the action happens, but maybe the action's about to happen anyway. And maybe the post credit Pope's not gonna be needed. Um, but yeah, here we go. So we've got Dragoons going in here, I guess. Again, we've got Ullens here, so we've got Lancers for pressure being sent in. Wow, well, you can see the morale is just shattered. Uh, both sides uh, breaking, but like Chevalegas here breaking. We've got uh, Dragoons uh, and Ullens breaking for pressure. Actually, I think the Dragoons are just about to get sent in. Here they go, they're gonna get sent in. We've got the blue and the blacks of pressure against the green of Wettenberg, and there you go, it looks like a allies captured a building, well that's great, we don't need to know though, <laughs> I don't need to know, there's cavalry fighting going on, and it looks like infantry is now going to be mobilized to try and defend this little uh, choke point here, I guess you could call it, but yeah, I mean, it looks like the goons are, uh, well, the only ones that are going to come out of this alive for both sides, looks like Ullens broke, and uh, Chevalier's broken, They, I mean, the Ullens broke and ran off the battlefield, the uh, Chevalier's did run backwards, so they might return, we've got some, a small unit of Freikor, uh, Jaegers that also went over to support and the cavalry has retreated just in time before the line infantry opens fire onto them. Uh, looks like over here in the center, like Austria, Prussia and Lutzau are like really pushing hard and they're going to be pushing hard onto the Spanish flank. I don't know exactly where it is. I presume this is all of Wurttemberg's army as well. Like I can't, I don't think he's got anything hidden. That's his general all the way back there. So yeah, I presume he's got it all like here committed. We've got Joseph Bonaparte here. Um, but I, I haven't really seen the Spanish army yet. Okay, here it is. As I speak, the Spanish army just appears out of the gloom. Just like pop, pop, pop. They appear. And yeah, we've got like uh, Guard National here. Like I presume, yeah, these are National Guard like militia. Um, we've got... I don't know. These may... I presume these are either going to be really good because they're the Guard. Or they're just going to be like National Guard and awful. Uh, but yeah, we've got lots of like Guards. Um, these are going to be... Oh, these are Royal... Legion of some sort. Uh, it's in Spanish and stuff like that. I did Spanish at GCSC, uh, which you can look it up if you, that's what level that is. A high school for us. Um, but yeah, I do not know like half of these. The Fuselayers, that's line infantry of like Guard Royal. And anyway, the cavalry looks like it's engaging. It looks, they might be able to shoot some shots. Are they Chevalegas? So they might be able to have like some shots. It looks like it's calmed down a little bit. Um, the French are really pushing hard on this. Uh, on this road over here, they need to be careful because, well, they could get cut off. Like, I mean, they could get cut between the uh, Prussians here and the uh, Austrians that are oncoming. It looks like they are going to make a push, though. This is the Spanish player, the Spanish-French hybrid. Yeah, he's going to make a push with his Dragoons, and he's going to try and go for the... Uh... Oh, this is Landwehr Ullen, so no wonder they routed, like, earlier on the far side. They're just Landwehr. Um, wow, 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 wow. I was not ready. I do apologize. And, yeah, the... Fre uh, the uh, Austrians have just routed the Spanish line. I mean, not every unit can form square in this game. So, like, guard units can. Other units can't. Uh, more allied buildings have been captured. It's great for them. And, um, yeah, like, most of the civil guards, I think, like, routed instantly there. And they had, like, Voltigeurs of the guards, yeah. So, most of the infantry for Spain just disintegrated. Jeez. Now the uh, Prussians are going to go after us. Is this the general? No, that's just as just, just the cheval. Okay, and here's the rest of the Spanish forces up here. This is like the more like actual elites of this is the line infantry here. They're going in for a cannon though. That's a good charge there into that cannon. Get rid of that cannon crew. And that's a, I mean, that's a risky thing by Lutzau. But I mean, he looks like he's pulled it off. Killed most of the crew. There's five of them left. They might be able to man one of the guns if they can return. They're now in a form square, which allows these, uh, these Jaegers to pick these guys off in square formation. You can watch some of the, uh... The land fighting going on over there. Just watch off into the smoke as the they fire. It's a volley, men. These are uh, these are the Voltigers of the lines. There, Voltigers are kind of like uh, light infantry, but I guess they're like a line variant instead because they're like a royal guard. But yeah, it looks like uh, Russia, which we haven't obviously seen much of, is now massing his cavalry ready for a strike on Spain. It looks like Spain's gonna be the first to go. If anything, oh, the French have struck. The French have struck, and they are taking out the Prussian cavalry over here. I do apologize. I'm, like, awful at, like, keeping an eye on stuff with Napoleon. This is the first, obviously, Napoleon battle I've done in ages. I think I only ever did one before. The first Napoleon total war. Um, but so, I'm 
be a bit all over the place, I imagine. But yeah, the French, like, Guard Imperial here and the uh, Spanish, like, hybrid have, like, worked together. And they've, like, routed all the uh, Prussian cav here. I mean, it wasn't great cav, in fairness. Well, force Russia is forcing Russia back and what remains of Austria's cavalry back to uh, basically deal with this. And the another Russian gun is a... Uh, well, not another Russian, but another gun for the Allies is almost, uh, like, gone. And they have another one here. They have a 12-pounder and a 6-pounder. They've lost one of the guns for the 6-pounder, and they could lose another one. We have general, we, a general has died? Where? Oh, they killed the Wurttemberg's general. I think. That must be Wurttemberg's general. He was, like, left right at the back of the map here. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so the Prussians just went sniping in there with their uh, Erlens, and they uh, basically got a really nice kill. I mean, yeah, land of their And now you can see here, like, Wurttemberg is now fully engaged in a, in a fight in this village, or just on the outskirts of this village. And they're falling back already. It's fall back. The general has died. We must fall back. Where's our second in command? Yeah, oh, I mean, these units are amazing. The detail put in by the, uh, like, the, uh, modder is, like, the main modder guy. He, like, literally just lives and breathes the periodics. A bit like me, I do live and breathe it. I don't actually do it much on the channel, but I do fully enjoy this part of history. And just the smoke looks amazing. And they, yeah, they're just firing, uh, in there. And what, what's this that they're firing at? Uh, Brandenburg, well, it's like a reserve musket, so they're sort of like a line infantry, but they're really not, I guess. Yeah, they're, they're firing over there, doing their best, getting some kills. I mean, there's some uh, line infantry here that's... So these guys are really getting focused down because there's a tiny unit here, so I don't know why they haven't flanked around, just deal with this Wurttemberg force, go, like, into the heart of the city. They have a lot of Prussians in here, a lot of Prussians, a lot of Russians. And, yeah, they're really, like, painting down the French need to hurry up and get... Like, some support of it. They've got their cavalry, but I haven't seen much of the French infantry. If any of it. Um, and it looks like the Spanish have regrouped most of their forces that routed, but they're uh, falling back to the French over there. So the Spanish is almost split in two. Yeah, Wurttemberg over here, he's just spammed out these line infantry, and uh, they're now having to hold this line. But it just looks amazing. The crackle of the guns. Here comes some more Prussians. The Prussians are coming! The Prussians are coming! As they say in Waterloo. And yeah, I mean, they're so close, you can, you shouldn't be able to miss. But I mean, muskets of the day were so inaccurate. You more than likely would miss uh, quite a bit. You have to aim, like, almost... To, like, hit someone in the head, you have to aim, like, almost one or two feet above them. Just to, like, hit them in the head. But you never shoot for the head. That's a bit silly. And then you've got, like, the Baker rifle with... Uh, Sharp and stuff like that. If you've ever, if you haven't watched the Sharp series, I 100% recommend you go and do so. It's a great series, like Unapoionics. And here we go. We've got some cut, uh, some some guns. I was about to just say some cannon though. Like point blank range. They're gonna fire. Uh, you imagine they're gonna fire. Uh, oh, why can't I a canister? I was about to call it a cluster round. I was like, no canister. But yeah, you can see back there, like the dropping of the uh, reserve infantry. Let's have another volley, men. Another volley. And yeah, I mean they're getting volley. How are these? The Prussians still standing. Like, they've lost a lot of men. This one's barely, uh, like, got any morale left. Let's have another volley. But you can hear, like, the crackle of the guns going off. I mean, they're just taking their time, aren't they? They're just taking their time. But while they're waiting on their time, I mean, I'm sure I'll miss it now. But it does look like the Russians are now engaging. They've got, uh, like, they've got their musketeers up here. They're now forcing back this line infantry. But this is some good in line infantry here from the uh, Spanish, so that should hold a while. They're still loading. Jeez, they take a long time to load in uh, Napoleon Total War 3, I should add. Uh, the Prussians look like they went for a charge there with the, uh, with the, with their cavalry, was that? Oh, no, that's Landwehr. That's Landwehr. They got routed by uh, the, uh, by the uh, Dragoons here. Okay. I mean, that's really good for Wittenberg. They've now routed this right flank for Prussia. I mean, Prussia is starting to lose a lot of men. I don't know what's happening here exactly. His reserve musketeers are sort of getting in the wrong area. We've got a fight going on in this uh, building here. Got a uh, guard infantry going in. What are they fighting? They're also fighting uh, grenadiers of the guard. Okay, so they're going to have a... Like, that's going to be a pretty hard fight. And these line infantry... Uh, yeah, Prussia's falling back. Prussia's not liking this. And a good idea, I'd fall back to this big, like, town hall here. And he's got a gun coming up. No, 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 not a gun. We've got uh, his general, uh, August 
von Nisiao, who basically revolutionized how the Prussians fought, which is like how they fought up until World War Two, almost. Uh, and then obviously there's like a frigate named after him, or a, uh, a battle cruiser, something like that, named after him. Uh, but yeah, he wasn't a very good general, uh, surprisingly. Not a very good general, but a very good, uh, like, tactician and, like, revol revolutionized uh, tactics. But wasn't very good in actual, uh, actual, actual battlefield combat, but yeah. But yeah, it looks like these are... Oh, these Grenadiers look awesome. Very much like Catherine the Great. Yeah, 1799, I think, is either Catherine the Great or just Paul or Tsar Paul. Yeah, these guys are very old style with their Grenadiers. Look at those guys. They look amazing. Then we've got the Spanish line over here. Cordoba. Or Cordu. So that might be Cordoba. I don't know. It looks like Wurttemberg's been forced out of here by some Jaegers. Um, yeah, this line is very, very bizarre because, like, the front, uh, the looks out here is, like, threatening, like, the flank of the Spanish, but it just needs to push a little bit. It's barely being held on. Like, they're fighting hand to hand in here. It's a bloody, bloody fight. And it looks like the uh, Prussian guard nearly were going to rout there. Uh, they have the numbers, which is surprising, and they're sending in more. Is this the rest of the units going in? These guys look awesome. They're, like, fluffy white hats. Um, but yeah, it looks like Wittenberg, after a rough start and his general dying, is, uh, well, is kind of pushing back Prussia. Prussia kind of overstretched a little bit, and now in some goes some more Dragoons. These Dragoons are just, like, causing a lot of havoc. And, I mean, these are Landwehr, so I guess they can't... Oh, they definitely can't form a square, these guys. And are they breaking? No, they're just reforming. This unit should return, uh, really. You'd have thought 227. That should return before it gets off the battlefield, but if it... No, that's still going. And now we've got infantry in it. I didn't even... Wow. This is just... Yeah, I mean, this Prussian line might not hold. And now they've got some point-blank infantry here. They're going to fire into this uh, landwehr here, or reserve musketeers. I guess they're slightly better. And it looks like the Prussians are going to win this fight here. They're going to push the Spanish out. Yeah, the Spanish uh, are broken, and they're, they're going to die. And they've taken the town, basically. They've taken the town, but they're going to lose this section of it, possibly. Oh no, the Dragoons have been forced back. Yeah, I think the Prussians and Lutzau are going to take the town with the help of the Russians. On the far side... Oh, the French have now appeared. The French have now appeared. Okay. This, I imagine, is the Spanish... No, this is the Guard. This is the Guard has now appeared and they're fighting the Austrians. I have not really been focusing here, but let's have a look at the goddamn French. We've got uh, Trilliers. I'm pretty sure they're like a, line, a light infantry unit. But they look more awesome and these will be like the elite... Uh, line infantry units, really. Well, they are in history, but I'm sure they're like line infantry or something. Like, I'm going off, uh, like, when well, we've got Voltigeurs here. Again, I believe these are like light, inf light infantry, but obviously they're like in a line formation. More Voltigeurs. Yeah, you're taking a, t taking a thing. Well done. Uh, more Trilliers. Yeah, these are like, I'm pretty sure in like base game, they, they are light infantry. And um, from my knowledge, they are light infantry. I do love the flags, the, like, the guard flags just look amazing. Just like, oh! Just looking in the background, you can see the Prussians, oh, not the Prussians, the Austrians just fighting it out. And this is, uh, these are going to be some elite boys to break. I'm sure they are not going to break easily. And, uh, well, the Prussians, not the Prussians, the Allies have got a really good fort, uh, like, position here with their guns. They fire, like, some round shot, and they're going to just, like, put some holes in those lines there. But... I was uh, keeping an eye, and you can see the French have got the Spanish Cav is back over here. And they've got, I'm guessing they're holding these buildings because they are point, it's a point match. So you want to hold as many points as possible. But yeah, we've got the Dragoons here, like all these Dragoons getting ready, and they're going to rout these cannons. I don't think they've realized that the Allies here, or if they have, they're going to try and get these Carassiers back. But not in enough time. Uh, the Carassiers being like the most elite, they have like their, well, they're known for having their Cuirass, which is like their press plate. Oh, and they disappear. That is bizarre. <laughs> if you zoom in on the Crassians, they disappear. But you can see here as they come by, they have like their breastplate there. They look awesome. And yeah, they should uh, they should hold the line just quite nicely. And yeah, the French are just... Well, are they going to charge? Here they come. Surely this is going to be it. They're going to charge up. And then they could go into the back of these line infantry. I mean, they're desperately trying to send back some Jaegers, actually. Try and stop them. Uh, and then we've got the uh, general here, a Karl von... Uh, well... Ostrike. So that's just going to be... I don't know what that is actually. Is that his title? He's not going to be called Austria. And yeah, there you go. The gunners are running. 
The gunners are running. They're going to abandon their guns, which uh, means they can't really move them again. And here come the uh, the dragoons. And we've got Jaegers ready. And these Jaegers are going to get routed, you imagine. Uh, because, well, they can't form square. And here come the Cuirassiers. They're going to come and try and destroy these uh, gunners. And uh, some of the French cav actually did break. Right, well, that's good. Uh, th th this is another Cuirassier, actually. What's this here? Oh, this is the gun crew. Okay. Yeah, well, I think that, that cavalry then was quite easily repulsed by the uh, by the Austrians. So that's really well done there. I mean, most of it should return, I imagine. It's fairly healthy numbers, I would say. But I'm not sure. Like, I, There's a lot of Prussian stuff that I thought would return that didn't. But they were n near the red line. But yeah, I mean, just how glorious it is. You've got the whites, the Austrians, and the greens of the uh, Dragoons. Look awesome. Awesome. God, I love Napoleonic period. It's just... It's like the last... Great period of like fancy uniforms, bright fancy uniforms. And we've got the Russians over here now, they're helping their Austrian allies out. Like half these factions end up fighting each other anyway. Like Lutzal definitely helps fight on the side of the French, as the Russians technically, by being out they were allied with the French. Never fought side by side, but they were allied with the French for a bit. The Austrians invaded Russia. And so did the Prussians. Uh so, and so did the Lutzal. So I mean <laughs> it's yeah, poor Russia gets, like, ganged up by all of these nations at some point. But yeah, you can see here with their, like, grenadier hats on. These guys should do just fine. I'm surprised they can't throw grenades. Like, that's the great thing about grenadiers. I mean, I guess they have maybe extra morale or something. Oh, we have some... What is this unit? 28th E. He's like, uh... Oh, God, they're getting shot with whatever they are. Uh, are they just, like, conscripts or something? They have... I have no idea. Yeah, they must be conscripts. They've got, like, weird trousers on and all sorts. And then we have Napoleon himself. He's here on the battlefield. I didn't know where he was exactly. There he is in his... Well, he's got like a Mamluk guard. No, it's not actually. No, it's not. It's just uh, like a Hussar or something like that. But yeah, there he is. The man himself. He's not in his classic greys and his green. It's like if his other classic uniform is his green like Dragoon sort of outfit. And yeah, we've got uh, Trilliers up here. I guess they've been treated like line infantry in this uh, mod, I guess. But I'm pretty sure they're light. But still. Oh, the officer there with his pistol. Just duking it out probably with the other Austrian uh, like officer. As you can see, the are these, I want to say these are grenadiers, but they're not, are they? They're going to be line infantry. Oh, no, they are grenadiers. That's right. Uh, and then we've got Grenzers here. They're like a light infantry unit, I'm pretty sure. Or supposedly. They're either a light infantry unit or uh, like a low tier line infantry and their brown uniforms they look awesome and there you go I mean it looks like France is gonna fall back here the guard has been forced back Wow that is pretty impressive I don't is this the span okay the Spanish army's finally arriving where have they been the entire time they need to be really going in like column formation these are volunteers I presume Les volunteers less frisons don't know what that is uh, yeah these are they don't look very like they should be in Spain. Like, the units in Spain were elite units. These look almost like the conscripts that were, like, rallied in, like, the final years of the war. We have killed their general. Another general dead. Uh, which one's that? Which one got killed off there? Another general. Uh, was this the Spanish general, possibly? Or is that... No, Napoleon! Napoleon's dead! Oh, God! There he is, lying in the ground, dead, motionless, doesn't give a damn. But uh, yeah, he just got sniped by uh, Chevalegas. I did think he was like, kind of, he was coming up this road and like, like beyond here, like the French don't control, they're being forced back to like this sort of, uh, I guess they said land bridge, uh, because yeah, beyond here the French were breaking. I think he was going up to support his like men up there with morale or something, but yeah, they're getting, they were getting forced back and I was like, it's a bit dangerous. I didn't say anything because I thought, well, the player knows what he's doing. But uh, maybe he didn't. And then a general is under attack. This is, uh, oh, the Lutzal general. He's gone into combat. He's routing all these French in fairness. I think he's fine. I mean, he's getting a bit close because, yeah, oh, yeah, he's getting very close to the Lutzal general. Because, well, you've got a lot of Swiss. This is, this is less Swiss. These are the Spanish forces and they have Swiss troops. Okay. Uh, we've got, like, Spanish... Actual, like, Spanish, Spain, and then we have the Spanish-French Legion or whatever it is that, like, the French forces in Spain, you call them, I guess. So confusing, I know, I'm not making it easier, but, I mean, these Fusiliers, 
If the guard look amazing. Joseph Bonaparte would be amazed. He would be very proud of his men, even if he's a terrible commander. But yeah, Lutzow's desperately trying to get troops across to come and aid his general, I think. But yeah, the Allies would certainly say we're taking the day at the moment. They are taking the day at the moment. I think the French, they're not out of it. There's no balance of power, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't say they were out of it just yet. And yeah, the Prussians are, well, they've taken the town as of the Russians. The Russians now look like they're in command of uh, dealing with the uh, Wettenberg forces over here. Pushing them back. Uh, Wettenberg's had a really, really hard time. Like, he's just been, well, he's now, like, losing troops off the side of the battlefield. That's a shame. But yeah, he's had a really hard time. I mean, he's got dragoons all the back. Oh, no, they're line infantry. He's got line infantry all the way back there in the back lines. Just sneaking around. Doing a little bit. But yeah, he's, like, falling back. He's, uh... Don't know where he's going to make a stand, but I mean, in doing so, in falling back here, I mean, he's now making the fr um, uh, the Russians. I just went through like nearly every nation in my mind when I said that the the Russians are now can just go this way when they're done. They can just go and flank if if, Fry, if the Fry Corps or well, the Lutzow Fry Corps and uh, the Prussians can hold this line, which they should be able to do. Or the French? No, the French are sending more troops over. Jeez, they have so much stuff still. But the Spanish is just like well, the Spanish is a fresh army in fairness. These are like reserve infantry. They are... Yeah, they're sending more troops up this way. They're going to kind of try and deal with the Russians, but surely those that's like five units? The Russians have like... I mean, I know the Russians are bad, but... Like, unless Lutzow and um, Wurttemberg can keep those units alive to support the French, they're going to be outnumbered there, the French. And we've got uh, light infantry here just picking off troops. As uh, the French and the Spanish continue their retreat. There's a lot of this that goes on. You don't usually... You see in these games that a lot of people seem to fall back a lot more. When they realise that like, the battle's like lost in that area. And it's just really smart. And you can see here the guard and the Spanish uh, forces... Spanish-French forces are uh, kind of just holding this area here. This is going to be their base of operations. I presume they've... Uh, well, I presume they, this farmhouse here is probably worth points. And that one over there is probably worth points. Um, but they've lost the the village for now. They might need to draw the forces back, then beat them, like in the field elsewhere before pushing back to the to the town. But I don't think they're going to get a chance. They have so many forces to the Allies. They have like so much here. The Prussians and the Lutzow look really fresh still. And they just keep forcing back the French. And like you can see here, the Austrians, for instance, have uh, got troops all the way around the back. And they're going to. I think we're going to have a carry charge here in a moment. The Chevaliers look like they're ready. Rallying up their troops, the Morales is coming back, and they might go for a charge here on their own on the Chevaliers of Austria. I'm not sure. Yeah, I look. Oh, Austria is going to be the one to do it to him. Here we go. And yeah, the Austrians. I don't know who's going to win that fight. Oh, the Spanish are going to lose it. 100%. Yep, yeah, there you go. Spain has been routed there, and I mean that's their cavalry force gone. Well, again, I, I might return, but I don't think so. It's pretty already pretty beaten up. It might do, it might not. Wittenberg's already lost another unit here, sadly. He's lost his general as well, so it's really hard for him to just keep his morale. But yeah, he's like trying to beeline over this hill and try and regroup here. But I mean, the Austrian cav is now going to cut him off, which is really, really smart by the Austrian player. Just get this cavalry up here, back onto this hill. Cut them off, and it slows them down, allowing the Russians to catch up. And they got Alexander Surov. Ah, nice. Uh, who is in command? Is he still alive? Yeah, he is very much alive. He uh, was a he's a very famous Russian general, obviously being in this game. Uh, but he basically, when Napoleon invaded Egypt, and this is after obviously taking all of his Italian territories, Surov basically led the led the Russians through Italy and. Uh, Recaptured most of the Italian lands for the Austrians, or on on behalf of the Austrians, uh, which like undid most of Napoleon's work, like while he was in Egypt. And that's kind of mad. That I was just thinking, like when just thinking of it, like the Italian, the like Italy, and then you got just Russians just chilling in like in Italy. It's kind of mad to think about that. But yeah, like the Russians had troops like by the end of the war, like garrisoned all over Europe. They were just everywhere. Like by in 1815, like after. Like, if Waterloo had been, like, an allied defeat, 
Napoleon never would have won. Never could have won. Um, because the Russians had like 250,000 troops, if not more, I think, in Germany alone, just garrisoning in the off chance that Napoleon may return. But look at these Prussian. These are De a Deutsch. It's a German legion. Jeez, these guys are pretty cool. Remind me of the uh, King's German Legion of Britain. But uh, yeah, so I mean, and then the Austrians had like hundreds of thousands of troops in Italy as well. And, like, Napoleon was surrounded by enemies. Like, he went for the nearest enemy, which was the British and the Prussians. But there were so many more like allied forces like ready just to strike and destroy his like, what would have been then a depleted army. But I mean, this is a nice, nice lion battle that's forming. And I'd say the, I'd say that the, uh, French and the Spanish are probably winning, looking at morale, stakes, but I mean, here you come, here come the Russians, because they don't even send their entire force after Wurmberg, they're just going to send a few forces there, and we're not, they actually rallied to those line infantry, but yeah, the French are setting up some uh, Legion of the Reserve uh, Versailles, ah, well, Treaty Versailles, that's going to come in in a few years' time, well, 100 years' time, or about that anyway, and yeah, they're getting ready to face some uh, Grenadiers, it looks like a lot of Grenadiers, yeah, wow, this is all Grenadiers and Surov in the back. Will we get a volley, man? Excellent, excellent. But yeah, if we get the map up, you can see, like... I mean, I think the red is, uh, the red is the allies. And you can see they are just... I mean, where my cursor is, you can see that, like, they could have force off... They could punch a hole through there. Which is uh, just about here. If they punch a hole through there, here, and then they can just turn the flank, and that'll be really, really massive. But there's little cavalry left, and I think both uh, forces are kind of leaving the rest of their cavalry as reserve. We've got Chevaliers, we've got some Carassias, actually. That's a good force to hold on to. Um, but, yeah, oh, we don't want it bigger. No, no, no. Not even bigger, no. And then what's the back here? Is that, oh, that's the Chevaliers as well. But, yeah, you can see here, lots of men running. It looks like it's a lot of the Prussians now breaking there. I mean, they've not actually broken once. The Deutsche Legion are breaking. Wow. And the Brandenburg Reserve Line Infantry. But we're about... I think we're about halfway through this battle, possibly. Yeah. So, I mean, I hope you've still got plenty of snacks and drinks. And if uh, you've survived this long into the battle, then well done to you, sir. You've served your country, you've served your country well and the Legion well. Listening to the musket sounds just amazing. Surely, just charging this guard is again, these like the national guards. If you charge these guys again, they will probably break. But it looks like we're going to have a charge here. Uh, these are uh, Joseph Hugo. What are these guys? They're uh, like a royal unit? I presume these guys are. Yeah. And, well, it looks like they're going to charge these Jaegers, which uh, they're not breaking, but they're, they're, they're not winning that either. Yeah, they charge and then they realize that, well, they're sending up some, well, some other stuff. Some more Jaegers. They've got guns over here. Got the six-pounders. And the Austrians are now sending more stuff over. And look, I mean, the French are actually making an offensive over here. Wow. The French are making an offensive. Uh, this is the Spanish forces here. Oh, my God. I just saw, like, the gun here just, like, hit and just see, like, five or six guys just get flown back. The gun is still on top of the hill. Is getting some great, great shots. I mean, the other one I think is being uh, killed off. But yeah, this one is going to get some great hits here. I think they've fired. They've got their own gun somewhere. What's this? This is a uh, this is an artillery of a uh, the guard. I'm pretty sure artillery de pied. Uh, it's an eight pounder, I think. Yeah, they've fired another hole there. Oh, jeez. Just saw like the aftermath of that one. I mean, I'm pretty sure Austria doesn't get great kills, but it's probably great for killing morale, like, or damaging morale. And the Austrians, I think I'm going to fall back. I'd certainly fall back to, like, the bottom of this hill, possibly. Give yourself a chance. But, I mean, they're really running out of forces in the center. The Austrians are trying to do, like, a flank round here. They've got their general here, and they've got some Carassias. I think, and what have they got here? Like, a tiny unit of uh, infantry? Yeah, like, and I think they're going to try and force for... Oh, they've got salt here. We've got assault. Uh, one of the marshals of France. Quite obviously famous uh, Battle of Auslitz with the Prats and Heights. He was the f his general. He was the uh, corps that basically retook the Prats and Heights and uh, turned the tide of battle. But yeah, there he is doing his thing. He's got some artillery here ready and waiting. 
And I'm pretty sure, yeah, he's a Spanish. He was, like, in Spain quite a lot of the period of, like, the Napoleonics. He's often... Certainly at the end of the war, he was, uh... Well, actually, no, the entire thing, he was really just fighting there. After, like, Auslitz, he kind of got designated with being left in Spain. Poor guy. Spain's such a horrible, front, uh, like, frontier for the French to fight on. Constant, like, guerrilla fighting. You can see here, they're just getting shot as they retreat at the French. I don't think they're getting many kills of the uh, allies. They might not want to bother doing this. But yeah, this is a full retreat from the uh, force of the French. And look, you can see here, they're going to get some Chevaliers in behind. I think they're going to try and cut off their retreat. Which, I mean, is to here. I mean, this is the this is the red zone, I'm presuming. This, oh, no, no. This is just a random road. I thought this was like the end of the uh, area. I was like, no, what? <laughs> That's not right. But they won't get over here. There's no way they'll get here in time. But yeah, you can see the Chevrolet is in behind. They're now just cutting off their retreat. And they're going to have to st stand and fight here by the looks of it, this line infantry. And this is a huge chunk of the French and uh, like their allies' forces. But I mean, I can't see what's left. Like, this must be it. I mean, surely like some of these guard units will return. Because they are guard. I don't know. You'd have thought so. But literally all that the French have got here is like two units of line, an artillery piece, and salt. Which I'm sure is not going to be enough. And, uh, well, it looks like the village has been fully emptied. We've just got, like, a few units here. We've got some musketeers. There's still a Vettenberg units here. <laughs> Big respect to these guys. They're going to hold the hold the village as long as possible. They've returned. They're like, we won't give up this village just yet. And they're sending over some, uh, these look like guard units here. These are actually, like, full-time infantry units. Get a volley from them. Are we? I don't know. They're not getting ready. I mean, you might want to turn and face them. Uh, line infantry of, of Vettenberg. Wilhelm. Nope, they're going to retreat. The drums are sounding for the advance. Or in the case of uh, Vettenberg, the retreat. I don't actually know if they've got a drummer boy. They certainly do. The Prussians. Where's your drummer boy? Oh, there he is in the front line. I think. I can't tell. Nope, they don't actually have a drummer boy. It's just magically appeared. And yeah, they're running away. Maybe the drummer boy's already dead. R.I.P. drummer boy. But yeah, they're getting shot as they retreat. I think Wittenberg's going to go for the town hall. He's going to try and take it. And force the uh, Prussians to come in for a charge. But I mean, this is guard against line infantry. And line infantry that's lost its general. Surely they'll be fine. Oh my gosh, and the French, yeah, are in a mass retreat. Look at that! Jeez, mass retreat, mass rout. What do you want to call it? I mean, Spanish as well. Not looking much better. It's the Chevaliers, uh here are just running riot, doing a lot of damage, and then obviously they're like they've done a mass charge here. Oh my gosh, look at this. The Prussians are truly coming. The Prussians are coming! Oh my gosh. The havoc. And they've lost the yeah, the building lost. They lost the town hall. Yeah, it doesn't really matter because they've just like the Prussians, the Russians, and Lutzau have just like destroyed this French front line with a huge charge. Oh my gosh. And then there's only like one unit of uh, Spanish Voltigeurs holding the line. They're just like, oh god, we'll hold the line, boys. Everyone else retreat. Oh no, we're going as well. We're going. We fa don't fancy our chances. And then you've got the Chevaliers here. They're going to get so many kills from just running troops. And uh, yeah, there's like a one tiny unit of like line infantry holding the line here. But I mean, this is this is surely like... The French and the uh, their allies are done for. I mean, it looks like Wettenberg's going to retreat and go for this house. Maybe, and try and get that, cap that point. I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah, the allies here have just destroyed, like, just punched the French in the face and gone, no, this is ours. We're taking it. But, I mean, the French who actually won over here, this small engagement, they're having a bit of success here um, with what remains of their, like, Spanish forces. But they might need to just retreat them because otherwise they're going to get cut off. Yeah, they've got still a fair few French forces here. What's this? This is the Spanish. They've got, like, some Dragoons left. They might have needed them earlier to help on the other side, like over here. They might be needed. But uh, we've got Carassias here. They're just trying to duke it out with these Dragoons. You imagine the Carassias are going to win that fight. You do imagine. But yeah, the Austrians here are, like, stretched out so thin. Fire a shot. Just 
the smoke is amazing. Oh, and they're in the brown uniforms as well. They look cool. 1809. This is basically at the point that uh, the Austrian army has basically reformed itself to a sort of... It sort of reformed itself a bit from, like, its old, uh, like, revolutionary style. And uh, under Archduke Charles. Or Carl. Ah, oh, that'll be what it is then. Carl and Charles. Yeah, so this is the Charles Legion. Uh, so, yeah, this is, like, the brother of the Emperor Francis. Uh, he reformed it. And uh, he actually was a pretty good general. He's actually, like, forced the opponent to sort of a draw at Asper Nestling. And uh, he only just lost a Wagram as well. I mean, Napoleon just won, I think, through, like, Charles retreating and losing his nerve. And there you go. The reserve here for the... Or, like, the, the holding force here by the French has just been routed. I didn't think it was a really good force. Its uniform doesn't say it is. It's not in its nice bright blue. But yeah, we've got, like, some Chevaliers here. Yeah, they're in full retreat. I mean, they already were in full retreat, but the French are, like... They have got, like, nothing left now. I have no idea what's, like, where their troops are. <laughs> well, they just keep disappearing, I guess, because of line of sight. But, uh, yeah, these line infantry here, this is what left of Wittenberg. How has he survived? He's literally, like, gone from the entire side of that, like, battlefield. And you can see there's, like, a fight going on over there. Um, like, Wittenberg and Prussia are just fighting out to retake the town hall. But they've been fighting over here the entire time, and they've just taken it. And uh, the Prussians have just taken that. And, they, yeah, they've gone from here all the way round the back over here. We've got back over there with three units. It's pretty impressive by uh, Wittenberg that he's got all the way over there. Now the Prussians, what are they doing? They're going, they're retreating. I know. I don't know what they're doing. They're all in column, which is good. You need to be in column formation in this game. Moves quickly. But yeah, they're taking their time. And you've got the, uh, the Russians retreating as well. I don't know what they're doing exactly. Looks like Lutzau's being left, and like some of Russia's being left with the task of taking it, but yeah, there's no real re need to retreat. Unless you're going to go and cap all the buildings, but... Yeah, looking at the map... Well, you can see here we'll have it enlarged. It looks like there's a couple of points in here you need to take it. One point. You've got the four down here, which they hold. So they don't really need to hold anything else at the moment because the French haven't taken anything. Uh, if they can take... I mean, if the French take this, they'll get four points. But they don't have hold any other points. So, uh... I mean, there's that building there, which is near... Uh, which is Salt's just fallen back from, which he could have possibly held... Wait, actually, no, he still holds. He still holds. The French still hold this point. Really? So I guess it's kind of even. Uh, unless the Allies are going to take a few more points in the, in the city. And we've got the Crassiers in here now. We've got Salt in here now fighting, his, uh, fighting for his life. I think he's gone in to help his uh, cavalry out. And uh, I don't know. Yep, Salt's dead. <laughs> I didn't think that would end well. Oh dear. Come on, Frenchies. They didn't need to do that. You could have just set up these boys and they would have fired a volley. Now the French are retreating and uh, this cavalry can get out of here just fine. I don't think they took a single loss from that shot. That volley there from these uh, Burgoyne troops. Again, they don't look very good, do they? They look like they're in... Maybe they're in winter uniform. Like, they're in the north of Spain. It's snowy. It's horrible. Maybe. Have they killed the general of... Uh, this is... Surely not. This might be the general for, uh... Yeah, it is. And the general's there. He's not... He's gonna rout. You imagine. But he's, uh, not dead. Uh, like, he's in his white uniform there. Yeah, and they're, they're uh, turning to shoot him. So, I mean, Austria's about to lose his general. Which is pretty big. Because Austria's still got a fair amount of troops. We're not, like, masses. Yeah, actually, he might get out of there just fine. Why this Karassi hasn't gone in here? They could rout all of that easily. Oh, uh, now Wittenberg's having to stand against Lutzau. Oh, no. Poor Wittenberg. And he's going for a magnificent charge. Yes. Rout them all. For the glory of Wittenberg. I respect that. I respect that. Oh, God. And there's a charge here as well. He's going into some light, light infantry. The Jaegers are breaks instantly because he's having to charge across. He's getting volleyed every time he gets across. He might break this unit, though. He might break this unit. Yes, he did. For the glory of Edinburgh. Into the next one, boys. Quite often, though, units will break even if they're like... Uh, yeah, like they're wavering now. They they will break even though if they charged in. Like, not necessarily even if you get, like, shot at. Just because it's a scary thing to do. Just charge in. Like, you don't know if you're going to die or not. So the unit might waver. But, I mean, yeah, they... Oh, no, they're... Yeah, they're holding. They're holding. Where's that? That's still here. Okay. I don't know what they were on about. Then, but I mean, yeah, Wittenberg's 
retreating in a long line. These units might return, but I don't know. The French are the French are all but beaten really now. Yeah, and there you go. Wurttemberg's been forced back across this land bridge. I didn't think this was a good idea. He should have just held it the far side, shot them across it. He's got no numbers to, like contend with all of these troops here. It looks like Prussia. Ah, Prussia's going across this way now to come and support Austria because Austria is kind of really overstretched. Which is very true, to be fair. Lutzar, I think, has got the smallest army left, I think. This is kind of all that he's got left, I'd say. But we're going to fast forward a little bit, uh, just for the sake of the video. Uh, I don't think anything major... Oh, I don't know, actually. Salt's forces over there are getting, uh, getting attacked. There's a little bit of a line fight going on here. It's a slow fight. These are slow fights. Especially 4v4s for uh, Napoleon... Yeah, so I'd say, I'd agree, a glorious victory is soon to be theirs. And you can see there, look at that. These Austrians are just firing into the uh, blob of the, the uh, Spanish-French forces here. I've got some Jaegers here. Just taking the time. I mean, these guys are getting shot on the back. It's just brutal. And they, I think they're trying to push for this building here. The French. But, I mean... They can push for it all they want, but they're going to lose their four in a moment. Like, Lutzau is literally about to come and take this building. There you go, just taking this building. They've got both the four points now, I believe. Yeah, they got that one, and they hold this one as well. And, I mean, yeah, the French, as I've said multiple times, full retreat. All their units routing. It's going to be a decisive, decisive victory. And, I mean, they've got, like, a tiny unit now holding here. What's this? This is the uh, Spanish army. These are actually in their blue. This is their classic blue. This is one of their more elite units than you imagine. But are they retreating? No, they're they're just repositioning. Okay, okay. It's like the it's like the fall of the empire. It's just brutal to watch. Oh, the general there just firing a shot. Another captured building. Oh god, just firing like point blank range. And here comes a charge from Lutzow. Silent charge as well. There you go, and in they go. The general just waving his pistol on. He's pistol whipping. He is, isn't he? He was pistol whipping. He's got his sword out now. He's just got a kill. Nice kill, mate. Nice kill. And there you go. They routed that French unit. And uh, I imagine that's just any resistance there is gone. Um, they're falling back another unit here. It's not got much left. But, I mean, surely all that they have left now is just, like, stuck in that little pocket of resistance over here fighting the Prus uh, the Austrians. But, as I was about to say, the Prussians are about to arrive and just kind of seal off their fate. I mean, they're getting surrounded anyway and killed off. So, I mean, it's kind of all lost. Ah, it's a, a unit from Brie with their fine, fine cheeses, and they're breaking just like that. They're getting volleyed down by Grenzers and Grenadiers. It's been a brutal fight, I won't lie. You can see, like, the masses of body just, like, littered across the battlefield. I mean, it was a really nice line battle over here. And then, like, it just all went wrong for the French here, the French and Spanish. They all, like, about 10 to 12 units routed here. And most of them are still running off in that direction. A few keep returning, but they don't all return at once. They're seen returning in dribs and drabs. And it's just not enough. And now they're shooting. Ah, oh, they're shooting across the uh, water at some guns. That's not a bad idea. I mean, I don't think they've got any kills at all. I wonder if you can kill the horses. And then they can't drag their artillery around. But it's a uh, six pounder. They're gonna literally they're gonna unload the six pounder across this river, aren't they? I don't even think you're gonna get a volley off before the Lutzow arrives. They are, aren't they? They're gonna fire a volley point blank range at these poor, poor French. Here they go. They're gonna form up across the uh, across the river. We're gonna we'll watch from here. Like it's uh, we're an onlooker. You can see the French on one side. You've got the uh, Lutzow on the other. Just all gonna get positioned up. And, the, I mean, one poor guy already shot for the French. Oh, jeez, yeah, they're... I think they're going to break, like I said, I think they're going to break before the guns even get a shot. Yeah, oh, no, maybe they are going to get shot. Jeez. Oh, ripped into the side, killing a few guys with canister shot. Here comes the next one. Oh, yeah, getting a, coup, a few more kills. Poor guys. They didn't deserve that. They didn't deserve that. They were going to get gunned down over by Lutzow. And Vedenberg's got units returning. Vedenberg just seems to be like... He's like a cockroach almost. Um, he just won't return. That's actually kind of a cool view. He just he will just keep returning. We'll uh, 
Vanberg. Obviously, I don't mean the player, but like his units, just like cockroaches, they just keep going. But there you go, a victory uh, for the Allied forces. Um, so uh, well done to the uh, the Allied forces on their victory, and well played by the uh, I'd say the French forces, the French and their allies, I guess you call them. Um, but yeah, so I believe this was sent in by the Prussian player because that's uh, who we can like unit statistics we can see. Um, Oh no, this is sent in by... No, this is sent in by the Lutzal player. I do apologise. Uh, so, uh, sent in by Casual. And, uh, well, that I acquired off uh, Scout, this uh, replay. But yeah, it was a really, really good uh, battle. Nice to have Napoleon Total War 3 on the channel, finally. Um, and we'll have a look at kills. So, I think the unit that got the most kills is this uh, Jaeger unit here. 268 kills. Uh, another one getting 152. I saw a cannon getting 113, which is pretty good for cannons. Like I said, I think they do more morale damage than they can do, like, sniping. Uh, but yeah, there are the uh, like the kills, if you want to have a look at them. I'm pretty sure the general, yes, there he is, uh, got like 76 kills. Well done to him. Um, but yeah, there you go. So if you'd like to see more Napoleon Total War 3 on the channel, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and leave a comment. And until next time, Legionnaires, bye for now.